Okay, welcome to the Frittle Show. Thank you so much, Sean, for taking the whoa, time whoa, to be with us. Frittle Show. Well, is this how you dress for television? I Look, didn't know I've, we were going to be on television. I've got a tie. I've got a jacket. <laughs> we were gonna, I took we this were, interview seriously, and you show up in, the, in a T-shirt. We were going to record. Jeans. There was going to be no... By the way, and, and, and you don't even have socks on, for crying I out loud. I do, too. Look, they're right... Oh, my... Frittle <laughs> socks. socks. There are socks. By the way, your, your grandmother's here. She is Nanny-o, here. you call her, right? Nanny-o, yes. Nanny, can you pant at Nanny-o? <laughs> Nanny-o, you remember when she fell in the pool? Oh, yes. And, and, and that she dove into the kiddie pool and hurt her head? Oh, yes. And, and look, she, she's never been the same I since? I think she's more sane since that happened. It helped. You do. It yeah. helped her. It helped. She it was helped. worse Don't before. you think she should she dress up for a big before. TV interview? <laughs> All right, moving on. I just realized I had well, this th This is the best part of the that's interview. That's okay. Nanny O now just... I want another picture. You she, can have another picture. You can get another okay. picture. We'll get another picture. All right. So, okay. Do you throw a football in your show? No, it's audio. No one can see it except for right now. Well, I thought you were videotaping. Well, we are this one because you're special. I'm special. <laughs> you're oh, special. Oh, excuse me. The last time I checked, you said somebody else got more hits than my interview. Somebody else did get more hits than you, like twice as many. <laughs> like twice as many. Well, you, it was like your first interview or third. No, no. Well, it's been almost a year. That's actually why we're doing special with you. One year. I, I welcome her back, and she does, all she does is give me a hard time. All right, what's the question? Okay. What all right, I, so... My generation. You should never, here's the, never let the guest take control of the interview. You know, I was getting there. That's like question number nine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interview advice. Nine? We didn't get there How yet. many questions do I have here? As many as I feel like asking or you agree to say. All right, come on. All hit right, me with so it. my generation forgets the value of hard work. Yes. That's something you obviously had no problem with. I mean, what, you started working like as soon as you could crawl? Pretty much. When did that? First paper out at eight. Uh-huh. Dishwasher at 12. Cook at 13. Bus, by, bus boy at 15. Busboy, waiter, 15, 16, bartender at 17. Then it was painting houses. Then it was hanging wallpaper. Then it was reconstruction. Then I was going to school actually to build houses. And then I did construction, fell off a roof. This part of my arm from here down, dangling, almost like... But I, you see, I was smart enough to land on my arm. You landed on your arm? But I did bust all my teeth up pretty bad. Oh. So are they real? Most of them. Most of them? Not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all those years I played hockey, every one of my friends lost their teeth but yeah. me, only so I could lose them in construction. Yeah. Did you ever have a job you didn't like or said, I yeah, never want to do uh, that again? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, worst job in my life, uh, I was in California once, and I went out on an oil rig. It, it's not like North Dakota. It's not, it was mm -hmm. it's a very different circumstance, and uh, I felt like I was in prison. It was that bad. Yeah. So then all these different things you did, how did you transition to radio? Did you just walk into a studio one day and no, say, hey, I want to do this? I never. It's funny because my parents growing up, it wasn't shut off the TV. It was always turn that radio? blank, blank radio okay, off right. um, because I'd have it on at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and I'd still be listening. Mm -hmm. And I listened for whatever reason. I was drawn to talk radio. I, still, I always liked music. I still like music, but... I was really drawn to talk radio, and, and the great pioneers of talk radio, from Barry Gray to, to Barry Farber, and later Bob Grant, and then Rush, and in, uh, when I lived in Rhode Island, I listened to <clears throat> Jerry Williams and Gene Burns. I mean, these guys were it. These were the real pioneers that, yeah. that pay, you know, literally opened this path for people like myself, and, and now you're obviously following in these footsteps, uh, to, uh, to get on the air, mm -hmm. express opinions in a strong way, and, you know, now people have grown accustomed to it. And, you know, when I started in talk radio in 87 or 88, I mean, I think there were only about 200 talk stations nationwide. And now we've got, you know, thousands. Yeah. And then you've got cable TV exploding. So, mm -hmm. What was the hardest thing for you to learn when you first jumped into radio? To listen. To listen to the listen response? To, yeah. I, like, for example, the worst thing that you could do is, like, you could prepare questions. And I do for big interviews. Um, not, I'm not saying I'm a big interview, but for like with presidents and, and mm -hmm. vice presidents and things like that, or if I read somebody's book, but the, what I learned is to listen to their answer. If you're thinking about the next question, I'm not hearing you. Right. So you got to really focus in on what it is that they're saying. So I think that's where I probably have grown the most as a host. What was your favorite interview that you've ever done? It's, it's a, you know, people ask that. I like the whole package. In other words, I like debates. I like news interviews. We, we did an interview tonight with an, uh, uh, an Iraqi Christian woman in Mosul who literally is trying to help her fellow Christians because mm -hmm. they've been told in Mosul to convert to Islam or get killed. Yeah. 
And I find that's fascinating to me. That woman is living under terror, and how is she handling it? Uh, was it cool to go to the White House? Was it cool to be on Air Force One? Was it cool to be in Iraq with Donald Rumsfeld? Mm -hmm. I just like every part of it. I like the whole package of it, radio and TV, because radio is cathartic and probably helps calm me down for the one hour I have on TV. So is TV just kind of a, a microcosm of what you're doing for three hours on radio? No, it's very different. Um, TV is more powerful in this sense. I would argue radio is more intimate. Because you, you, in talk radio, people have to actively listen. Right. Uh, in television, uh, I can just say, really? <laughs> you know, and you, make a, you right. can make a point without right. having to say it all. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it, it's a little more powerful. Um, I like doing them both, really. It's a, I'm very fortunate. Very so blessed. this is your studio. Yeah. You got your football. Camping. How did this, where did this come from? I'll tell you where. See all those crew members over there? Yes. So it just started with, I like to get loose, I like to keep a loose environment in here, mm -hmm. which is kind of, it's not like how a lot of hosts here do their shows. In other yeah. words, I talk to the crew, I would throw balls with the crew, it, it helps loosen me up, it loosens up the environment, we make fun of each other, we joke around, we eat pizza together, we have a great time. And for me, I like the environment to be loose. The more yeah. relaxed I am, the more relaxed our guests are. I, I always feel it's going to be a better show. This is about having fun. This yeah. is about, you know, this is not brain surgery. Yeah. Nobody's life is on the line here. Um, I think the issues we talk about are important. Mm -hmm. These are troubling times we live in. I take my job seriously. I don't take myself seriously. By the way, you just shut <laughs> off the lights. There's no Hannity logo left. No Hannity it's a big left. sad moment, the end of the Hannity program. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that, that's my answer. So you like for it to be fun. Do you, what does Hannity do for fun when you're not here throwing the football having fun? You know, that's an interesting question. What do I do for fun? Um, I like to go out. I like to eat. I can't eat as much as I like, which I don't <laughs> like. Um, two beverages usually does it for me, adult beverages. Um, I spend a lot of time at my kids' sporting events, tennis. Mm -hmm. um, I love to go to sporting events. Rangers games, Yankee games, football games. I love sports. I love watching sports. I play golf, but not very good. I work out by doing martial arts, um, and I do that now with a, with a vigor and intensity I never imagined I'd do. Yeah. Um, I like being able to defend myself. I like being in good shape. Yeah. About a year and a half ago, I lost about 25 pounds, and I've been able to keep yeah. it off through okay. working out. Mm -hmm. I think you remember when I was fatter. Admit you were it. never fat. I was fat. No, you weren't. Well, you, I'm telling you. You lost weight, but you were never fat. I, I don't know what it is. It was here. I was like four months pregnant, five months maybe. Are you laughing, Grandma? <laughs> All right. And <laughs> I had fortune. Now okay. I only have two. Let's go back to sports. The Jets are your guys. The Jets play I the like Broncos the Jets. this I also year. like the Giants. You like the Giants? The I Jets play big... the Broncos this year? Are you yeah, frightened? Do. Are you scared? No, I'm not frightened or scared. No. Look, no. I, 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 I tip my hat. I think Peyton Manning... I like, I've always loved John Elway. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like the coach of the Denver Broncos. John Cox. I, I like, I like uh, the management yeah. of the Broncos. They're a great team. Yeah. Um, the Jets are rebuilding. Uh, I, I, you know, what can I argue? I mean, they, yeah. they lost in the Super Bowl, but I was pulling for them yeah. over yeah. the Seahawks. I, I bet on them. I lost a lot of money on them. And uh, they're just, uh, they're a great team, a great organization. I tip my hat to them. I like Woody Johnson. I like Rex Ryan. Uh, I like Geno Smith. <clears throat> I like Michael Vick, except for the dog thing. Which one? Geno Smith? I think they're going to start with Geno, and Geno's got to step up. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not, um, th this is the professional fo national football league. Yeah. You either got to perform or you're not going to make it. Sort of like radio and TV. I know many of my friends have gotten fired in radio, fired in TV. Mm -hmm. And I've been very fortunate to have something that a lot of people in radio and TV don't have, which is longevity. Yeah. And the, way, the only way I can get that is through harder work. I right. work harder now than when I first started. Yeah. I mean, you would think every year gets easier. It's just the opposite. Every year gets harder. It's more competitor, competitive. And you got people breathing down your neck, wanting your job every day. Um, really, people want your job? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a, it's a. I'm very blessed to work here. Uh, it's a great place to be, and I think the best thing that I did to prepare myself for this job is I moved around. I lived five years in Rhode Island and five years in 
in California and two years in Alabama and four years in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of got lucky and I was able, I got hired on the ground floor of the Fox News channel. I was terrible when I started. And because it was a new channel, I had time to grow, which that time does not exist today for somebody new. Yeah. The first day you're on the air, there's going to be articles about your ratings. There's going to be articles about whether you're good or you stink and mm -hmm. whether or not you're going to survive. That was not the environment when I came in. So it was very outlier-ish, if you've ever read Malcolm Gladwell. I haven't, but you've done very well with this. So yeah. I'll wrap it up with this. How do you define success? What is retired Hannity 40 years from now? Look back and say, You said that with a smile success. on your face because you know 40 years from now I'm going to be long, dead, and gone. Just, you know. And, you know, uh, you know look... How do you measure anybody's success in life? Mm -hmm. From a religious perspective, we've all sinned and fallen short. Mm -hmm. right. So, amen, right? Amen. amen. Okay. Uh, from a personal perspective, I never do as well as I want to do. I'm just always driven. I want a little more, a little more. Higher ratings here, higher ratings there. I don't measure success by financial measures. Um, although I've been paid more than I deserve, I think, over the years. Uh, am I a good father? Am I a good husband half the time? 30% of the time, <laughs> you know. How do you, are you, are you a good person? Do you good for the people around you? Do you care about people? Are you generous? Are you kind? Are you, you know, do, do I add anything worthwhile to people's lives? Like we've, we've been involved in this project on radio, putting Americans back to work, and mm -hmm. we've got over 2,000 people, jobs, that transform their lives. Yeah. I feel good about that. I feel good that we've raised 15, 16 million for the children of slain heroes in Iraq and Afghanistan. I feel good that I can have a little extra money, that I've donated money to a lot of military charities and other yeah. charities. So you try to do the best you can knowing that you're, we're all flawed and egotistical maniacs and uh, you try and you try and uh, eliminate that pride every day right. well thank you very much Sean I really appreciate that's it that's it that's it did yeah. you get to all nine of your questions no well, you, you, you want do you want to say anything to no, your... let, me, let me see let me see here <laughs> what does Hannity do for fun what sports played in your life Geno Smith Michael Vick you got that one in yeah where did the well, set what sports did you, you got play? that in what sports did you play uh, ho I played ice hockey you lost your teeth. What else? No, I was the only one of my friends that didn't oh, lose my teeth. Didn't. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. No, yeah, I was right? listening. Grandma, she was listening. I asked listening. if the teeth were listening. fake, and that's where that came from. Most important decision I've ever made. How would you define success? What will a retired Hannity? I, I want to learn how to play golf better. I stink at it. No, that's the first one. We already got all those. Oh, all right. You got all those in. You got all your questions in. I did, yeah. Let me ask you a question. What do okay. you plan to do with this new outlet of yours? What I plan to do with the outlet. Uh, that depends on how many people keep listening. Yeah. So now, we'll see. What, what is this friend of yours, Nat, that apparently works for a secret society? <laughs> Natalie, right? Natalie, yes. Yeah. I believe I know who you're talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that Natalie works for some secret society where a bunch of famous people apparently sit around a fire in the woods. I've heard this. And there's I think rumors it's a big fire. A big fire. A there's big rumors fire. about what goes on out there. There are a lot of rumors. Do you know who goes to that? I know some. I mean, I'm not personally, I don't know them, no. Yeah. Depends on what you mean by that question. And, why and, your, and how, how you did your friend, it, who answer. apparently doesn't make a lot of money, how does she afford a Mercedes? I, that's a great question, Natalie. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> All right, Fred. That was fun. Thanks.